YouTube and welcome to this episode of the Gammon Raw. So this is a continuation of a video I did, well probably yesterday by now. <laughs> so I did a masking video on this and um, here we are, we're ready to do the paintwork. So I'm going to take you guys through the entire procedure, um, wet on wet all the way through to clear coat. So I've already got the prep work, masking and all that done. Obviously I've already wiped it down with some wax and grease remover and we're ready to put our wet on wet primer down. So you may notice here and here, there's a couple of tiny little cut throughs. I'm going to have to fix them. I'm gonna to have to put a little bit of color over them. Not the end of the world, um, where it really matters around here, where my blend is. So I'm doing this in base coat just to be clear. Um, so I'm gonna just be clearing mainly over there. Just keeping an eye, I think there was like one or two spots, yeah, just down here. I'm gonna to have to put a bit of color down there too. Um, but yeah, as I say, the important parts I'll be able to just clear over. Um, there's a little chip there, so I think I'll just touch that one up. So dab it in with a little bit of colour. PPG Enviro Base is the base coat system I'm using, so that's PPG's water base system. And I've actually, um, I've been using these new tack wraps. I don't know how new they are, but they're new to me. Um, I didn't even order them in. They were just in there the other day. So they're, they're like, P, uh, sorry, 3M Aqua. I think they're just called 3M Aqua, ta Aqua Tack Rags. And they're much better than those Gerson ones, I can tell you now. I'm not a big fan of those Gerson ones. I used to love them. I used to swear by them, but I think technology's moved past those Tack Rags. <laughs> I just remembered something. Hold on. It's actually one good thing. Hold on. That's one thing I never used to do at the other shops, but they like everyone does that at this shop, and it's a good idea. Like they always leave your prep cart right outside of your booth, so if you ever need anything, it's going to be right there. And, and as it turns out, I need something. I just remembered I forgot to put some seam sealer up under here, just a little bit where it was cracked. The last thing we want is. Um, water getting up inside there and having their car rust out. You know how like every boss has got something that they, they're very pedantic about? Well, this boss here is, seal, is seam sealer. Not to say that I wouldn't have done it anyway, because I definitely would have, but yeah, that's just, that's their thing. That's the boss's thing here. And my old place, it was rags. If you, if you didn't use every, god damn it, if you didn't use every bloody last inch of a rag, the old boss, he'd, he'd be on your ass. But you'd have to, you'd have to cut them in half and everything. All right, so, where are, where were we? That's right, we're ready to put some wet on wet primer down. So I've got the wet on wet primer in the gun. It's white, wet on wet. Um, and I'm just gonna be putting it over the repaired area. Yeah, a couple of reasons. It's gonna seal it down. It's going to, um, there's a couple of cut throughs, as you can see there. They're small enough, and I'm confident that they're not gonna turn into pinholes. Um, they actually use a really good quality body filler here. Hold on, one second. I think they use the um, the 3M Platinum, I think it's called. 3M Platinum Body Filler. And I've found like little cut throughs like this less likely to have pinholes than some of the other body fillers that I used to use. I uh, that the guys used to use at the other shops. So that's what I say, like I'm, I'm more confident with this that they're not gonna turn into pinholes than some of the other ones. And the other reason that this is handy is because it's going to help with coverage. Because we're using white coloured wet on wet, this is going to help with the coverage of the top coat colour.
Now I've got some fast reducer in this gun here. Just straight up fast reducer. And I'm just gonna puff that over the edge to help melt it in. I wanna get it on pretty wet, but not too wet. I don't want it to run. That just helps, helps melt in that edge. That's about all we're gonna need. And as I mentioned before, there's actually some cut screws the whole way out here, but luckily it's just away from the edges, so yeah, they really didn't put much um they really didn't put much much paint on this from factory. But it's all good. We'll make it work. So I'm gonna go out, clean that gun out, and get the top coat colour in the gun, and I'll see you back in here in about, I don't know, five or ten minutes. This wet on wet actually dries pretty well. Righty no, back to it guys. Um, so it's been about 10 minutes. Now off camera I did actually get the tack rag and I um I wiped it over those blend areas just to make sure that I don't have any sort of dry overspray dust landing on there. And yeah, we're right to continue on. Um I think a big part of the reason, I was thinking about it before, big part of the reason I like these tack rags over these ones is because they're flat and they're nice big square areas. So when you get it, it's like that, right? Obviously, once they get dirty, you'll flip them over. But, so more, more of the tack rag is actually touching the panel because it's so flat, if you know what I mean. Whereas you look at this thing, it's just, it's all over the place, you know? Like, they're sort of flimsy and they, they fall out of your hand. They, they, they scrunch up like this and, I don't know, man. They're just not as good as the more more current ones, you know, like I know some people say, oh, un unfold them, but they're still, like, they don't conform, they don't want to sort of stay in that nice square, fits in the hand, and hit, a lot of it hits the panel, so, did I tack rag that? I can't remember. I, I do remember tack ragging that, but, uh, for what it's worth, man, take one second. I'm using this gun, this is a gun that I, I use but where I used to work it was more important because we were working on like Porsches and all that kind of stuff, like more high-end cars. If there's like one little, the tiniest little speck of metallic on a high-ace van, it's really not the end of the world. But what I did, like I used to actually have a dedicated solid color base coat gun. I had a dedicated solid color clear coat gun as well. So I had like two base coat guns, one for solid, one for metallic two clears, one for solid, one for metallic. Because yeah, the last thing that you want on like a black Porsche that's worth, you know, half a million bucks or whatever, is a, bit, a, a, a flake of metallic coming out of your gun. This is actually covering pretty good. It's probably only going to need two coats. Because obviously I've put that light grey, nearly white, wet on wet primer down. So it's 20% reducer, which is 20% thinner in the, in the solid colours. They don't seem to dry as nice if you don't put that extra bit of reducer in with TPG. Start doing that blend a little bit, start flicking that color out a bit. And another thing I've got to do with those little cut screws I mentioned earlier. That's that one. There's a couple up there too, but we'll get these ones first. As you see, I managed to keep most of that color away from the blend area. That's a blend. Um, and there was couple of tiny little, what I'm going to do here is turn the pressure down and just, I'm just going to be pulling that trigger in ever so slightly because that's about all it's going to need to be honest really not got, it, it really did just cut through that was the tiniest little bit of a cut through I noticed it straight away so I stopped obviously I don't even know if that's a cut through or just a shadow but I put a bit more colour over it either way 
Just inspecting, making sure there's nothing else that I missed earlier. It's looking pretty good. I do have that little touch up I mentioned earlier too. So what I can do there, bit of a makeshift touch up brush. These actually work just fine. These are cool. Turn yourself, make your own little touch up brush out of a masking tape. Single use, effective. Did I 
I popped the cap, yes I did. I know it when you do that. It's hard to see. It is actually quite hard to see the white because you, you got the low reflection. So a lot of what I'm doing is just off feel. I will have a look on the angle before we finish, but just I'll get get the oil in on. Yeah, no, that, that's good, man. That's real good. <laughs> I should do it. I should fly blind more often, man. Nice and fast with that car, I'll tell you what. You gotta be careful with your overlap that you don't have to do it because you'll get run. But. I mixed up 900 mils because I know I'm gonna need a fair bit. I've got my material using sandal with pretty fine art on on most most cars because I know how much the bumper is going to take, I know how much the guard and the door is going to take but sometimes on jobs like this it can be a little bit harder to, to guesstimate exactly how much material you're going to need but what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this for a good five minutes I like to do that. I mean, I know you can do like the one visit. I could leave a bit of reducer out and I could do like tack and wax style, but I like to put a coat on, leave it five minutes and then put another coat on. I've just got my little routine that works and it's been working good. So yeah, I'm gonna give that five minutes. I'm gonna go and clean out that base coat gun. And this is actually something I like to do. So how much have we got left? So we've got more than half left. That'll be plenty. That will be plenty. So I know that I use a little bit more clear on my second coat than my first coat. So if I've used more than half on my first coat, I know I'm not going to have enough to, to finish the job off, but um, I've still got more than half, so I'm going to have heaps. I've probably left over with about 100 mils, but it's all good. You get that on the big jobs. I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Let's finish this job off guys, last coat. As I said, probably only about five minutes, so I use a fast reducer, triple four reducer in that. Yeah, it's still a little bit tacky, but it'll be fine. It's a pretty nice warm day out there. I got the boost hit, um, I had the boost set at 19 when I was doing the wet on wet, but it was uh, already at 30. Um, that's just ambient temperature, so yeah, it's, it's nice. It's, it's spring in Melbourne, It's always a good time of year. It's, it's, I'd probably have to say spring is my favourite time of year. Because, um, oh yeah, I know, it's just starting to warm up. Beautiful days, not too hot, not too cold. You know you've got a nice warm summer on the way. Autumn is good too. It's a toss up between spring and autumn, but I decided it has to be spring because in autumn, you know what's coming. And winter's coming. And winter sucks. <laughs> Especially in Melbourne. Freezing. Alright. That's a little blendy blend done. Now where did I get to? Where was my stop point? It was around here, so I'll keep that in mind. I'm 
confident it's not gonna ram on me. Yeah. 